Hi folks, Mike from Kira Vans here again. Uh, today we're looking at doing the driver's side single swivel plate made by RIB or RIB. Um, now just before I get into the mechanics of how you actually fit it, I just wanted to quickly show you the difference between the passenger and the driver and why they've actually made them slightly differently. So this is the driver's side one. If I quickly whip that off and put on the passenger one, now these are more or less identical, apart from this one turns the other way, but what you can see is you've got your handbrake here. If I turn this swivel plate, can you see it's gonna start hitting the plastic of the handbrake. Even if we release it, it's still too low, so it's not gonna clear that. So what they've done, if I pop this one back over, they've built in these metal raising shims, which actually raise the whole thing up by that amount there. So once we turn it, you can see it just clears that handbrake now when it's in the down position. It'll still hit it if it's in the up position. So obviously when you park up, you've got to put your van in gear, release the handbrake, and then you're able to swivel your seat. So if they hadn't done that, if they hadn't raised it up, what you would have to do is get one of these handbrake lowering brackets. So you take all the plastics off your handbrake, unbolt the handbrake, release, the, take the cable off it, put this on, which effectively mounts the handbrake lower down on the seat base, um, at which point you then have to do away with this plastic cover and get a cloth one. So it just kind of avoids all of that. Uh, on the minus side, it does raise it up by a certain amount, um, but you can usually get over that by dropping your seat with the, the lever for the height adjustment. So that's the theory behind this. So let's have a quick look and see um, just how easy it is to actually fit it in your van. So the first stage, like a lot of these swivel fitting processes, is to raise your seat up if you can. That's just going to make access easier. Unplug any connections you have under the seat base, um, for example, airbag wires, heated seats, and then you can get your 13 mil socket. And there's two bolts at the back of each seat rail. You want to take those out first. Once you've got those removed, you can slide your seat back again, which will give you good access to the front two. And again, it's a 13 mil socket for these two. And here they are just in detail. So once you get these four bolts out, or two bolts and two nuts, then you can remove your seat. Just mind your back, they're quite heavy. Okay, now we've got the seat off, we can put our swivel plate on top of our driver's base. So it just drops onto the two threaded studs at the front there. Now the, the front fixings have got to go in the little gap um, on the shims. So we grab our two little black nuts that we took off the original seat. And this is quite fiddly, but basically you've got to raise up the base slightly so that you can fit these nuts into the gap, get them centered over the bolts, and then with an open-ended spanner, you can get in there and tighten those up. Right, let's those in nice and tight. Next thing we've got to do is grab the two long countersunk bolts and we're just going to push the lever away from us and rotate the top plate to give us access into these back holes. So these are an Allen key, 5mm Allen key fixing and they should find the little captive nuts in the seat belt, in the seat base. You may have to move your shim over slightly to 
get clearance, put both of those in. Nip them up nice and tight. Now we do recommend putting Loctite on all of these fixings if you're installing these permanently. Um, so that's the base in pretty secure. Just check and tighten up these front two as well. These are an Allen key on top of those quite large penny washers. Get those tightened up. They're left fairly loose out of the factory so that you can align these shims up at the back. So now what you've got is the bottom of the base fully secured onto your seat base. Next job is to lift the seat onto the top base and it gets secured with these four shorter countersunk bolts and they go up from the bottom and then the nylock nuts go on top. So let's just do that next. Oh, hang on. Don't forget to put your any wires under your seat back through the hole in the swivel plate before you put your seat back on again and just clip them in like this. Let's start off with this front fixing here. And then we're back to doing the reverse process, basically front nuts back on securing the seat rails to the base. Once you've got those on, slide your seat forward. Countersunk bolt up from the bottom through the rear seat slider rails. 13 mil socket to get the nylock nuts stuck on top. And that's pretty much done. Right, now you've got your swivel base in place. Um, I'll just give you a few tips on turning this seat around because it's, it's quite a tight space with the steering wheel here. So I'm about six foot tall. This is a, a comfortable driving position for me. Um, I've got the seat about four or five pumps from its lowest. Um, and what basically what we've got here is an awful lot of variables. This seat can slide forward and back. The backrest can obviously go forward and back. The armrest go up and down. Um, the seat itself can go up and down. The steering wheel can go up and down. And what we've got to do is use a little bit of all of those usually to, to enable it to go around. Once you've done it a few times, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So for me, um, first thing I normally do is put the van in gear, release the handbrake. I like to just pop the steering wheel to its highest position and then jump out of the van. Usually pump it up about halfway, armrest down, seat back forward a turn, seat all the way forwards, and then grab the red lever, and it should just spin all the way around without hitting anything. So it's, it's really straightforward when you get all those little variations right. And then once you're in this position, obviously you can, you can pump it back down again and lay it back a bit. Uh, obviously if you have furniture in your van here, your, your seat will probably only turn to about here before it hits that furniture. Um, but yeah, once you've done it a few times, pretty straightforward. One other thing to look out for, down here is the little red lever. Now as you pump your seat down, when you get to towards the bottom, you'll notice the plastic starts to deform because it hits that lever. Now that's not a problem in itself. You can either leave it as it is um, and just let it deform, it's not going to do any damage. Um, you can leave it a few pumps off of it so it's not hitting it, or you can actually trim a bit off that plastic as well. Um, so that's, that's it for this video. Hope you find that useful. This side obviously a little bit more complex than the passenger side. There's a video for that one as well on the website. Um, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. Any more questions, send us a message, give us a call, and we'll be happy to help you. All right, good luck with your conversion, and I'll see you next time.